Hi everyone, good morning. Let's start the lesson now. I have collected three problems related to the uh, linear equations and let's start with the number one. So here we have a triangle with the vertices located at A, 4, 0, and then B, 7, minus 1, and then C, 2, minus 5. Now the question is determine if the triangle is a right triangle. All right. <clears throat> so what we are going to show here is that the <clears throat> one of the angles, one of the angles of this triangle is 90 degrees. And see when when you wanna prove something, yeah, basically we can sort of draw the situation here. Yeah, so basically we can put these three points. <coughs> the first one, A, located at four and comma zero. So it is somewhere, one, two, three, four, there that's point a <coughs> and then the second one it's at seven comma minus one so this one is somewhere here right oops and the third one <coughs> It is somewhere there. <clears throat> now, you see, these are three points, A, B, and C. And if you look at how these three points are connected in, in a triangle, yeah, um, it looks like the triangle is a right triangle, you see. But, you know, in mathematics, when we want to prove something, is not based on our feeling, right? So you have to have an argument. And it's not also from the, the drawing here. The drawing, of course, is good to, to give us a feeling about it, but um, it's not a proof. <coughs> so how to prove if this triangle ABC is a right triangle? And if you look at here, basically, we want to see the the lines yeah connecting this point for example a and b and then the lines connecting a and c <coughs> or the line connecting a and b of course you know these lines they have the the slope right so for example the line connecting a and b the slope for example m1 and then the, the line connecting A and C, for example, the slope of it equals to M2. And then the line connecting to you know, B and C, the slope equals to M3. So, if two of them are perpendicular one another, that means, that means the product, the multiplication of these two slopes or gradient equal to minus one, right? So that means if, if they are perpendicular or 90 degrees, that means M1 times M2 equals to minus one or M1 times M3 equals to minus one or M2 times M3 equals to minus one. So basically what you wanna find here is the, the values of, of the slope or the gradient of the line connecting to AB or AC or BC. So let's calculate these values of the slope. We start from the first one, the line connecting to uh, between A and B, yeah? and we call it M1. Now, if you remember how we calculate the value of the slope, yeah, it's the rise divided by run. Or in general, if it's between two points, yeah, you can say, okay, so 
this is for example yb minus ya divided by xb minus xa so now the, the first one when it's connecting a and b uh, you see the, the values of this coordinate yeah okay so yb here it's minus one and then subtracted by the ya which is zero in this case divided by xb which is seven minus four so we got the first one um it's minus one on three or you know minus one on three yeah and let's find the other slopes yeah for example the second one the line connecting a and c so that means you are now doing this calculation yc minus ya divided by xc minus xa look um actually it doesn't matter if you put the order in reverse so for example instead of yc minus ya divided by xc minus xa you can also write down the slope equal to ya minus yc divided by xa minus xc so they will give you the same number basically right but um keep in mind that this order is important i mean when you start with ya this x also start with xa right so let's do one of them now um if you plug in these values yc which is minus five subtracted by zero yeah and then divided by um two <coughs> minus four so this gives us minus five divided by um minus two or you know five on two so it seems when you multiply these two values here yeah, between ma and mb where ma equals to one on three and then you multiply by five on two what you will get is negative well it's negative very good but look at the number now five on six almost 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 one but it's not one right so basically between these two lines here yeah, the line connecting a b and the line connecting a c they are not perpendicular so ac and ab are not perpendicular one another sometimes when you want to say perpendicular you can just write down the symbol you see these two lines like that yeah okay so we have proven that uh, between ab and ac they are not perpendicular so actually i'm still wondering if well of course the from the drawing from the figure here it's quite obvious but i just want to prove uh, also with the third line yeah okay so let's get the um third slope m3 so m3 it's between um you know b and c <coughs> so the the way you calculate it's for example, yc minus yb subtracted by xc minus xb, right? And if you remember this value, uh, okay, it's minus five. Yeah, yeah, minus five. Okay, sorry. And then minus, minus one. So, sorry sometimes i don't know where my pen is located from uh, this tablet okay and then two here two oops and then minus xb seven okay um right so let's calculate this value now minus five plus one <coughs> minus four <coughs> divided by minus five okay so are we minus five okay minus one 
right? So we got um, four on five, yeah? And now if, if you multiply, for example, between, let me, let me uh, zoom out first, yeah? So for example, you multiply this slope yeah, with this number, four on five, you multiply it with um, five on two. Of course, that doesn't give us minus, um, minus one, right? So that proves also the, the line BC and uh, the second one AC yeah, are not perpendicular. And then of course, when you multiply this slope, yeah, and this one, that doesn't give us also minus one. So in this case, you know, um, between BC and the, the first line, yeah, which is <coughs> AB, also not perpendicular. So this is how you prove whether they are uh, perpendicular or not, and they also prove this triangle is not a, a right triangle, which is a triangle that has one angle equals to 90 degrees. So in this case, well, we don't need to find out exactly um, the, the magnitude of the angle at the moment. Let's not worry about it, yeah, because we will learn about that in the future but um at this point yeah we don't we just we just show that you know the the product or the multiplication of the slopes here yeah between two slopes m1 times m2 or or you know m1 times m3 or m2 times m3 they are not equal to minus one which means they are not perpendicular one another so this is the first question okay i hope you guys uh, learn about this one, yeah, because this is quite an uh, easy one. <coughs> okay, so let's now move on to the second one. Right, so the question is like this. Show that the points P, Q, R, S are the vertices of parallelogram. P, Q, R, S, right. See, now, um, you know, sometimes the, the best way to answer uh, the question like this, yeah, is to make a drawing, yeah, because the drawing will help us what's going on, right? Now, you see, when I have these four points, yeah, I need to know where these points are located, okay? So, for example, the first one, P, is located, so this is one, two, three, four, five, yeah? It's located somewhere here. See the coordinate there, the X value is five, and then the Y value is zero. Now, where is the second one, Q? Okay, so this is six, seven, eight, and then the y coordinate of that it's two so it is somewhere here right and then the third one r it's located six comma five okay so this is And lastly, point S, it's located at these points here. Now we have, you know, this two dimensional shape here, yeah, which later we will prove that this is a parallelogram. Now I want you to know what parallelogram is, yeah? So this is one of the two-dimensional shapes here. Yeah? And what happens here is if you have parallelograms, yeah, you know, um, these two lines, they have to be perpendicular. Yeah? And also 
the length of these two, they have to be the same, yeah? And then, of course, these two lines, they will be perpendicular as well, so they have to be perpendicular as well, and also the length will be perpendicular, yeah? Now, <clears throat> here's another important property of parallelogram, that when you have the parallelogram, which means this angle and this angle, they are equal, and then this angle and this angle, they are equal. So they are just some properties of, of parallelogram. Okay, now, um, basically, I want to show that um, the, the slopes of two lines, yeah, are equal, because you remember previously, in the previous lesson, when we have to parallel lines, therefore their slopes are equal. So here we have, you know, these lines one and this line two. So let's call the gradient or the slope here is M1 and this is M2, yeah? Um, so basically we wanna find the value of M1 and M2 now, yeah? Right, M1. The slope of the first line, it's between um, this point, S and P. So here we can write down, it's, it's YP minus YS divided by XP minus XS. And then we can just plug in the number here, yeah? Okay, so it's zero minus, um, what's that? Three divided by five minus three. So we got um, minus three divided by two, or minus three on two. <coughs> so that's the first slope, M1. Now let's find out the second one, yeah, M2. So M2 equals to, this line is between R and Q. Right, so we can write down this is equal to YR minus YQ divided by XR minus XQ. So again, it doesn't matter when you swap this Q and R, yeah, they will give you the same number basically. So um, if you calculate this gradient, this slope, it gives us, <coughs> okay, um, YR, it's five, and then minus two divided by XR, six, minus x cubed, eight. So he, we have three and then divided by minus two or minus three on two. Well, you see these values now, yeah? This one and this one, they are equal. That means these two lines, they are parallel, which is a good sign. Yeah, a good sign. And now let's also prove one more. So basically we wanna do similar thing here. We have the third line here that has the uh, slope equal to M3 and then the last one, this line equal to M4 here. Yeah? So basically we wanna prove that these slopes, they are equal, right? <coughs> so let's do the similar thing here. Yeah? Now the um, M3, it's between R and S. That means we have calculated now YS minus YR divided by XS minus XR. So let's plug in these numbers now. Um, three minus five divided by <coughs> also three minus uh, what's that? Six, yeah? So this is minus two divided by minus three or two on three. So the last one is M4, which is between um, P and Q. So in this case, YQ minus YP divided by XQ minus XP, right? So let's plug in these numbers here now. Um, two minus zero divided by x minus five. So here we go, two divided by three. Now you see again, these two slopes, they are equal. 
yeah that means that means uh, these two lines they are parallel so of course if you look at this value they are not the same because um, you know they are not parallel one another that means uh, you don't need to worry between you know m1 m2 and uh, m3 and 4 so so basically we have done with this one because we have proven that um, these two slopes they are equal and also these two slopes they are equal yeah um, do we need to calculate the length of this line yeah s p and then r q well we could but um at this point we haven't learned how to calculate the distance between two points which we will do it later but you know when you just want to prove if the this two dimensional shape here is a a parallelogram yeah this proof is sufficient okay that uh, when the slope are the same like this yeah between m1 and m2 and then between uh, m3 and m4 it proves that this is parallelogram okay <clears throat> so this is the second example right i hope you also learn how to prove this one because you see sometimes when students are given question like this they actually don't have any idea how to say something how to prove something they don't know what is the starting point the starting point that they need to uh, do the, the question okay so i think when, when you are asked to prove something you need to know what is uh, the requirements of the, the question for example in the previous question we are asked about if the triangle is a right triangle that means you have to prove if one of the angles is 90 degrees that means they are perpendicular right and then this one when you are asked to prove it, if it's a parallelogram that means you have to prove that the slope or the gradient between two lines they are equal okay so <clears throat> that's the second <coughs> question now let me discuss the last one here let's go with number three now yeah write down the equation of the line through this point p for comma six which um the first one the line is parallel to the line two x minus y equals to uh, eight and then the second one is another line which is perpendicular to the same line to x minus y equals to eight okay so let's do the first one first yeah you see this question is quite um popular i mean this is quite standard for for the equation of the line yeah so you need to know exactly how to work with the question like this yeah um well again sometimes it's better if you can sort of drawing yeah the um situation right so basically this just to give you an idea what's going on here okay so we have one point located at four comma six yeah it is somewhere here that's this point p and then the second one is this line but um sometimes you know when when you have this equation here yeah, this is called um the uh, intercept form so okay from this one you can of course get the sketch get the drawing here yeah? so for example you can find the x and y intercept first yeah we can make a table like this when you are doing the um y intercept that means the x value equals to zero so when you have this one oh, so this is equal to eight okay sorry about this right so this is called the intercept form again and the nice thing about this form is you can get the um, drawing straight away from this one here yeah? for example if you want to get the uh, y intercept that means the x value of it equal to zero so this gives you the y value equals to minus eight um, right <clears throat> and then you can also get the x intercept which means the y value of it equal to zero so when the y value equals to zero the x value equals to four right of course you can just plug in the number here now now you know um 
let's get these two intercept points. So minus one, minus two, minus three, minus four, minus five, minus six, minus seven, and then here minus eight, yeah? And then um, the x-intercept is four. So the, the first line, it's somewhere like this. Now, <clears throat> you wanna get a line which is perpendicular to this one, yeah? And this line has to uh, go to this point, somewhere like that. Now, the important thing that you need to remember is when two lines, they are parallel one another, that means the slope, the slope of this and this line, they have to be the same. M1 equals to M2. But the thing is, how do we get the slope from the first equation? Yeah, this one. Well, of course, um, when, when you want to see the slope, when you want to find the slope, we have to convert this equation into the, the normal, the, the general form that we normally have, y equals to mx plus c. And, and the way to do that is simple. Basically, you can just isolate this y. Yeah? So if you have now 2x minus y equals to 8, I can write down that here. So if you move this minus y to the right-hand side, y here equals to 2x minus 8, or I can write down y equals to 2x minus 8, right? And, and this is exactly the form that we want to see now, because this form gives you this value of the slope, yeah, which we call it m1. So here, in, in this case, m1 equals to um, 2, right? And that means the, <coughs> the slope of the line passing through that point P, m2, if there are uh, parallel one another, they have to be equal to 2. So m1 and m2 equal and equal to this number, equal to 2, right? So now you already have the value of this gradient, this slope, which is 2. And then you are given the coordinate of the point. Now, how do you construct the equation of this second line here? So there are many ways to do it, and we have done this before, right? So one of the best ways is just to use the um, slope point form, for example, which is looking like this one, y minus y1 equal to m times x minus x1. So when you, when you have this slope and, and also a, a coordinate of a point here, yeah, you can just plug in them into this equation. So here, the value of the slope is 2, and then, um, you know, that point, the x is equal to um, 4, yeah? And then the y1 here is equal to 6. So here we go. y minus 6 equal to 2x minus 8, or the equation of this line equal to 2x uh, minus 8 plus 6, yes? So y equals to 2x. Um, minus two, right? So this is the equation of the line passing through that point P and it's parallel to, to this line. So how do we know if this is parallel? Because the slope they're equal, right? Now, um, the second part of the equation is find the second line now, which is perpendicular now with the first line. Okay, so this is actually not that difficult yeah basically what we will uh, do which is similar yeah um so you know from the first line to x minus y equals to eight that the slope of that line equals to two right now if you if you want to get the second line which is um perpendicular to that line yeah that means that means the product of the um, slope, yeah, let me call it m1 and m3, equals to minus 1. Yeah, again, this is also very, very important information. Or uh, in this case, I call it m3, yeah, because m2 was uh, 2 before. So when, when you know that the second line is now perpendicular to the first line here, yeah, so basically the slope equals to m1 times m3 equals to minus 1. 
And here we go, we want to find the slope for C. 2 times M3 equals to minus 1. Therefore, I can get the value of M3 here, which is equal to minus 1 on 2. Okay? Minus 1 on 2. Now, this line is also passing through the same point P, so it will be looking like this. Yeah, and, and again, this blue line has the slope equal to M3, which is minus half. Now, what is the equation of this line actually? Okay, so if you want to get an equation of the line again, you can just use this general slope point form, yeah, which y minus y1 equals to m times x minus x1. So here we go, we just plug in the number here, now the slope is minus half here, and then you know the value of x1 is 4, and then the value of y1 is it's 6, yeah? So now we can tidy things up here. Yeah, okay, so y minus 6 equal to minus half plus 2. That means y equals to minus half x and then um, plus 8. So this is now another equation of the straight line passing through that point P. Yeah, and, and it's perpendicular to, to the very first line. Okay, so actually, I just want to show you how these lines are. Yeah, uh, so if you go to a, a website like uh, Desmos, yeah, actually I've already done this, yeah. Um, okay, so here we go. This is the first line, y equals to 2x minus 8, yeah. And then if you remember um, the, the second line here, it's this one, yeah, y equals to 2x plus 2. So if you see here, these two lines, they are parallel one another. And also the second line here, it's passing through that point, see. 4,6, yes. And if you're now looking at the third one, this is now the third line, which is also passing through 4,6. And this line, the green one, is perpendicular to the red one, yeah. So, see, again, with this website, yeah, or the other website also, you can always check your answer by plotting them and then see if they're perpendicular or not. So, I think this is the nice thing about what we have now in this um, H, I mean, you know, in this time, we can always check what we already calculated by hand. And then you can see yourself, you can verify whether it's correct or not, right? Um, okay, so I think this is the example, the question that I want to discuss with you today. Yeah, and, and the next discussion, you see, between these two lines, the perpendicular one, yeah, there is one um, intersection point here, okay? And, and this is the point. But, um, so the next discussion will be how actually we can get, we can calculate this intersection point between the first line and the second line. There will be the uh, next discussion for the next session, okay? So stay with us, yeah? And we will discuss more uh, topics in mathematics and also in physics. All right, see you. Thank you.